I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive the crisis that everybody is now aware that we are walking through. And these, we're going to continue on with Q&A from questions that came in uh, when we were on air the other day. So... The question is, gold is one of the very few asset classes that has risen this year, but the price is still a far cry from the 5,000 to 10,000 levels that, that Mike Maloney has mentioned. Silver is, and I've mentioned that too, by the way, silver is worse. Not only has it fallen this year, but most miners can't even make a profit at current prices. Will we really see triple digit silver? Is the gold price realistically going to triple or quadruple or more? So those are great questions. And what that tells me when I see those kinds of questions is that you actually might believe, and I'm not trying to insult anybody, but you might actually believe Wall Street because yes, I know that those prices, those spot prices guide what you pay for them when you buy them and what you get for them when you liquidate them. But you also have to understand that a rise in gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So the answer, the answer that I will give you is we are, and it should be pretty clear to everybody now, that the financial system is irreparably broken. It died in 2008. The system is in process right now of resetting. And this absolutely unlimited money printing that the global central bankers led by the Fed is doing pretty much guarantees a hyperinflationary, uh, a hyperinflationary depression. So, and let me tell you, when you see spot gold at 10,000, 20,000, 60,000, a million, a trillion, those are nominal numbers. You really want to look at the value. What can I buy with that money? That's actually what matters the absolute most. So yes, I am, I am, I will put my neck on the line and tell you a hundred percent as this trend evolves, as we go fully through the reset, you will see silver easily in triple digits, maybe even quadruple digits. And the gold price, uh, yeah, in terms of fiat, both of them will be substantially higher than where they are right now. Look at Venezuela up 3,500%. I mean, come on. So, and then the next question is, what is happening with the debt clock? Thank you. So I pulled the debt clock and I mean, it, it's moving up, but I didn't see anything that was particularly like unusual uh, other than this disgusting number that the U.S. national debt is fast approaching 25 trillion. Let's see, hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. Yep. 25 trillion and they have on here that the dollar to paper paper to gold ratio so paper gold to physical gold is now 88.01 to 1. Now I can tell you for an absolute fact though it was before I knew enough to hit print screen that when I saw these numbers at the Bank for International Settlements derivative report it was for every 62,000 ounces of paper gold or digital gold, but not real, intangible gold is maybe the best way to say it, for every one ounce of physical. So that kind of goes back to that other question. Will we really see the gold price realistically going to triple or quadruple or more? Uh, yes, because the fiat market is failing. I mean, look around. That's what we're seeing. Look at what, I mean, the governments and the central banks have taken out every bazooka that they can think of, and they may think of a few more, but that won't save the system. We are resetting and transitioning into a new financial system. And, and if we just go along with what they have planned, 
I, I'm going to tell you, it's not going to be in our best interest either because the paper to silver ratio now is 174.2 paper ounces of silver to every one physical ounce. And haven't we seen the premiums explode in both the gold to what the COMEX or what the um, spot price is? Of course we have. So the debt clock is just ticking up, up, up. And by the way, debt per taxpayer is now at $201,168. Interesting fact, since most people, almost half of the population, can't come up with 400 bucks in an emergency, how in the world are they going to come up with $201,000? $201,168. Do you see the insanity in all of this? What is really going to be interesting to watch is look at the payroll tax revenues moving forward with all of these over 30 million people now unemployed. And by the way, the numbers for April, over 20 million in April alone. This thing is not over yet. And then what happens after September when the PPP runs out or ends? And also what happens in August when that extra 600 bucks gets removed from unemployment insurance? We've got some interesting things coming up. But please explain what happened during the 2008 crisis to gold and silver, bullion and pre-33, supply chain and availability. Well, what do you feel will happen if we have a lull and what do you think the next crisis will look like for precious metals? Okay, so what happened in 2008 was similar to what has happened with the rush to safety. But, the, but actually what happened this time going into it when people were panicking was kind of like what happened in 2008, but on steroids. So we have that graph where you see spot gold dropped about 32%, but at the same time, the premium that you had to pay for bullion gold exploded. And the collectible coins, that premium as well went through the roof, except that those coins made this trend high. So, and then ever since then, they've been losing that premium. Now, that is not true any longer, but the premium is still very, very low on the collectible coins. So uh, we could get, we lost the ability to get, well, not really, we never lost the ability to get stuff, but you had to wait in many instances for three months. We were going out three months on delivery for the bullion products. And of course, availability in the pre-33s, they just are what they are. So we were always able to get them, like we're always able to get them now, but what is available, populations and different things like that, that's gonna vary. That requires a conversation with the consultants because that's where they're inside of that all the time. I'm not, frankly, I'm not inside of that all the time. Not that I don't look and check and we're with meetings, you know, every week and we talk about what's happening in the supply chain. But the next part of the question, what do you feel will happen if we have a lull? And I think we, we will probably be entering a bit of a lull. And so what do I think the next crisis will look like for precious metals? I think those premiums will go through the roof because I can tell you I'm accumulating. Am I liquidating? Heck no. And I would say that most people that are buying the physical metal, they're not liquidating either. Neither are the central bankers that have been buying more gold than ever since they started tracking how much central bankers are buying. So with physical metals, whether it's gold or silver, once they come off the market, they're not coming back on unless you are willing to pay enough, right? In a normal free market environment, which the physical metals are a normal, real free market environment where you don't have a sale until a buyer and a seller agree to the terms. 
So if demand is great enough, that's going to push the prices up high enough and there may be some people that will liquidate into that. So I think we'll always be able to get gold and silver, what we can get and the price that you're going to have to pay for it. We'll have to see, but I don't, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm paying big premiums when I'm allowed to buy right now because you come first. So, you know, most of the time we cannot buy for ourselves at this point. But occasionally we'll get to, and yeah, we're paying the premiums and we don't care. I don't care because I know the true fundament goes back to the first question. The fundamental value of an ounce of gold and an ounce of silver is substantially higher than where it is right now, even with those premiums. And internal refraction asks, have you looked at the elements that make up the Bitcoin base layer and lightning network second layer? The answer is no, that um, I'm not really paying a whole lot of attention to intangible fiat that has only come into existence since 2009. Governments are not going to allow that to take over and be the new tool of barter. And they're not a tool of barter, they're a tool of speculation. Are you using Bitcoin to buy that or to buy anything with? No. So the answer is no, I haven't looked at it, nor do I intend to waste my time looking at it. I'm going to wait until the dust settles from this and then I will make some intelligent choices. But all you have is an intangible algorithm. It's just an algorithm. It's a math formula. That's all it is. That's not how I prefer to hold my wealth. But everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with. I'm not comfortable with that. I don't understand it enough. Even going through all the documentation, you have to be an engineer and a high level engineer in order to understand that. And I'm not an engineer, so. And Pax Vobiscum asks, I have paid up whole life insurance policies. Should I cash them in and buy more gold and silver? Well, Pax, you have to do what you're comfortable with, but I had in the past paid up whole life. And that is a very expensive way to carry term life. So I, again, just like I did with my SEP IRA, I cashed that out. I have term life insurance. That would say pay off my mortgage or those kinds of things to make if something happens to me, God forbid, poi, 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 you know, to make it easier for my children. And that is cheap. That's cheap. Whole life is very expensive uh, and who knows what's going to happen with the insurance companies. So you'd have to look at the insurance company, how they're attached and how they may uh, be harmed by the COVID-19. But it, it's just, it depends on what your goals are. So, uh, and I don't own any anymore, though I have in the past. Ray Holt asks, what collectible items do you recommend keeping during the research set versus things to sell that have value will decline? Not really sure exactly what you mean by this, but anything that is tangible is barterable. Okay. Now the difference between gold and silver is that, that they are universally barterable. Whereas if I wanted to use this glass, I would have to find somebody that wants this glass and has what I want from them in order to barter. So, you know, for barterability uh, and during the reset, you also want to be able to take advantage of opportunities. I personally like my, I like silver for barterability, though I also like some gold. It depends on, it depends on the function. And that's the whole part of the strategy and why I always say we do customized strategies because your circumstance, Ray, may be exactly the same as mine or it may be very different than mine. Your goals, you may be at a different point in your life and so therefore you would have different goals. You may have different amounts to work with. So if you really want to know what the best thing is to do, then you have a conversation with one of our consultants that is trained in this strategy. 
uh, and things to sell that have value that will decline? Well, um, let's see, what might those be? Uh, stocks, uh, bonds, uh, insurance products, anything that's fiat based that you can only convert into, in this country, dollars, but that you can only convert into fiat because that's the value that's declining. I don't care how they make the stock market look, a trillion times zero is a zero. So don't be confused by the numbers, by that nominal piece that's called nominal confusion. It's how they hide things from you. You have to look at the underlying purchasing power value because that's what determines whether or not you can buy anything that you need. And uh, Hussam Mokbel, Hus I'm, I'm butchering the name, I'm sorry. Do you think that the IMF will start SDR or crypto in demo no mode as the first stage? Well, in reality, the SDR, which for those that aren't aware, stands for Special Drawing Rights. It is the name of the IMF's fiat money. And it really is just in digital form. They don't print bills or coins or issue coins or anything like that. So the first stage is already in place. What is what they may do is right now it's all wholesale. In other words, it is just suitable for central banks and the like. And they can expand that to include more retail, which is something that they have been discussing. So, uh, you know, in 2009, it's been around since 69, they pulled it out and dusted it off and tested it in 2009 and it works. So I'd say the first stage is already set and done. And uh, by the way, for those that are curious, go into the USPS, so the United States Postal Service website, and in the search bar, put SDRs. You're gonna see that the SDR as a universal currency has been around and been in use at a high level, mind you, but for many, many years. So that's kind of an interesting thing to do if you're curious. And JD Fave Songs, who, uh, let's see, I had that on um, a sheet. Let's save that for one for Tuesday, okay? And I have that, so I'll answer that. And betters ask, do you think we'll have another big drop in gold if the stock market takes another dive and there's a scramble for liquidity? Well, we'll have another drop in spot gold because of the margin calls for those that actually borrow, which is many, to buy stocks. When the stocks drop, they have to come up with money and they may not be able to sell what they want. They're going to have to sell what the market will bear or buy, I should say. And so we could certainly see spot gold drop to accommodate those margin calls. But on the other side of that, I think that what you would see based upon the lack of availability is that the price to buy the physical gold, which is real gold, not spot, not the contract, but the real product is most likely to go even higher than it is right now. And J. John S. asks, how does a conversion system work with silver when it gets to the point where you actually have to use them, who determines the value in the transaction? Well, we know everything is computerized right now and we know how smart those phones are. And we also know that like, for example, if you go to a grocery store, there are scales all over the place. But since much, much of the silver is standardized, right? You have an ounce, you have a half an ounce, you have a quarter of an ounce, you have a 10th of an ounce. Uh, then I, what, I'm, what I think is going to happen is that all of those scales or their, your smartphone will be attached to the spot market and that will determine the value in the transaction. And BL asks, you explained when the system gets reset, the money in your bank could go from $10,000 to $1. What happens to those who have only $100? 
Well, you get 0 0.00001. So, I mean, the wealth just, the money that's held in there just evaporates. And Nancy J asks, is the FDIC insolvent? In one word, if there is a large bank run, a lot of people run to a variety of banks at one time, the answer is yes. Because according to the latest DIFF report, that they only had three cents for every dollar's worth of insured dollars in the system. And during 2008, according to the FDIC, if even one more little teeny bank had failed, it would have been obvious to everybody that they were insolvent. So that's why when the crisis, when COVID-19 crisis hit and you saw a lot of people rushing and pulling a lot of cash out of the system, well, what'd you do? You had Neil Cash Carry, part of the Federal Reserve, go on uh, 90 minutes and they all went out and did their dog and pony and you know stated, we'll never run out of cash. All we have to do is push a button and we can print as much as we want. So that was to prevent a bank run from happening. But many of you that have subsequently gone to the banks have found that there are limitations on how much you can take out at one time. This didn't just start. This has been happening since 2008. So the system's in place to limit it. And if a bank is in jeopardy of failing, well, that's where the bail-in laws, which haven't been changed, come into play. So they can simply tell you no, because legally it's not really your money anyway. It's just your perception that it is your money. But if the institution is failing, the bank has the right to, uh, the bank has the right to take that money. That's the bail-in. We saw it in Cyprus. We saw it in Greece. We, we've seen it in England. We've seen it in Poland. I mean, they've tested it. They know how to do it, and those laws are in place. So next week, I'm going to be with Sean at SGT. And as you guys know, we always have great discussions. He always asks, and there's so much for us to talk about. I'm also going to be interviewing Shad Sullivan, who is a rancher and a regional director for RCAF USA regarding the food supply chain and maybe the fact that the U.S. is importing meat when farmers, ranch, U.S. ranchers are forced to slaughter theirs. I think that's just awful, frankly. But next weekend, I'm going to be on a podcast with Dr. Elena George. It's on www.libertytalk.fm at noon Eastern Standard Time, both Saturday and Sunday. So I have my weekend cut out for me, and I'm sure it's going to be a really interesting discussion as well. If you have any questions about this or anything else, just send them to questions at itmtrading.com. Make sure you visit our blog for all of our images and links, itmtrading.com forward slash blog. Of course, this too will be posted on Brightian. And if you want to have a conversation with one of our consultants who is also trained in the strategy, just click that Calendly link below and set a time. If a time is not available, Call us at 888-696-4653 and we'll set a time that works for you with one of our very, very bright consultants. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell. We'll let you know when we're going live. But keep in mind that financial shields are made of physical gold and silver. And until next we meet, please Please be safe out there. Bye-bye.